Flat City Chapter 2 The Grid Dottie and I arrived in Flat City the next morning on the A-Line train. The grid, as we called it, did quite a number on our noodles. It was lined with possibilities, but short on pointing us in the right direction. Dottie and I had no more than a speck of dots on us, which meant we could not afford any decent sized flats. One stroke of luck was that I still had white lines and was able to sell them to some needles named Zig and Zag, who wedged us into a flat until we could find something on the up and up. We could barely scrape by with my sideline business. I would wait on the unemployment line with Zig and Zag, and then, desperate for dots, buy more white lines and sell them to the strokes at stake and bar joints. I'd end the drawn out nights at pole dancing clubs, curvy, wired, and flat broke. When it came to walking the straight and narrow path, my discipline wore thin. I never had. Dottie made friends with a slat in the flat parallel to ours named Twiggy, who was stuck working as a pole dancer for all the nimrods all wanting to stick it to her. I couldn't blame him. Dottie began to lose perspective. I was curvy and wired on a regular timeline. Until the final stroke. I wound up at the Rod and Pole Club and saw Twiggy twisting away. A broad stroke with so many curves I couldn't stop my perpendicular from standing at attention. My noodle was thinking with my perp. And when I say perp, I mean my perp and dick. I was so curvy been out of shape that night that I went back to her flat and forgot to go straight home to Dottie. Twiggy nailed me and then told Dottie all about it, sticking a stake in her heart. We were at a crossroads in our relationship. The direction I was going and suddenly became all too clear. Dottie waited until I was unbent before leveling me with the following. Dash... You seem wired on stringing me along on a path that's going to just lead to you bending the truth line after line after line. Twiggy told me you got horizontal. Don't deny it. One thing this grid has taught me is that I'm as straight as an arrow and more than I thought. The bloodline of my family is tugging at me and wanting me to have a more dimensional lifeline. I'm going to go home now. This is the end of the line for us, Dash. When I find some courage, I'm going to do something vertical in my life. I'm going to reach for another dimension. I want to expand my horizons. I don't want to stay stuck. I want to breathe. I think you're erasing my dreams, Dash, one segment at a time. And I'm not going to let you do that. So goodbye. I hope another direction will open up for you someday. If it ever does, come find me. I'll pencil you in for a future date. You broke me in two, Dash. You broke me in two. With that, she made a beeline for the beeline and was gone back to her father at the realignment school near the sticks. Ah, gashes. They can make you feel like a rectangle sometimes. And other times they cut your pencil in half and leave you thinner than a broken violin string plucking a sad tune in the veins of your heartstrings. As she'd drawn this line in the sand, I could feel the wet and curvy groove of tears streaking down my drawn-out face.